Hello, everybody. Thank you for, for being here. I'm Sebastian Bornick. I'm the director of research at Aronapsis. We are one of the SAP security companies that are part of BISEC. BISEC is a nonprofit organization where we, several companies in the same field, we join efforts in order to spread the word and do some awareness regarding how to improve and better secure your SMP implementation. As most of you may know, at this conference, we have had uh, for years like a dedicated SAP security track. So this year, we agreed with the team that I will be presenting in a minute that a good way to do something different would be let's see it all together and let's share our experience, let's discuss, let's openly discuss, and hopefully, we will have some questions from you too. Let me start presenting the people here, the, our panelists. We have a great uh, line up right today. So I will start with Frederick, Frederick Wedeman. It's okay? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> he's a cybersecurity expert. He's a chief te technical evangelist at Virtual Force. He has focused on SAP security for the last 14 years. And he has spoken at SAP and security related to in conference like RSA, Troopers, Sapphire, Ticket, among others. In the second place, we have Martin Gallo, or Gallo, depending who pronounces it. <laughs> we have two Argentinian guys, two German guys. It could be a soccer game, but it's a panel. It's, a, it's an SAP panel. You know so, how the last one ended, right? <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember. You don't need to. So <laughs> Martin Gallo is the Director of Strategic Research at SecureOut. He has been working in cybersecurity for more than 14 years also, including penetration testing, code reviews, and vulnerability hunting. And he has reported and presented on SAP security in several conferences, including here several times. Finally, we have your Schneider Simon. He's a chief technology officer and co-founder of Boldbridge Software, which also offers SAP cybersecurity solutions for organizations worldwide. With over 20 years of security and IT experience, Jör is a popular international speaker on traditional IT and network security, malware, vulnerabilities, exploits, and SAP infrastructure. So I told you, we got a, a, a great lineup today. And for me, it's great to be the moderator since these guys have much more experience than me in SAP security. I joined the industry three years ago after working in the, in the antivirus industry, so also it's really interesting for me, the challenge of moderating this panel, but also I can share with you some contrast when I move from one massive industry to a targeted industry as, as the SAP security. As you may see in the title, we decided to split it in past, present, and future. I mean, basically we decided the title first, but then we say, we say okay, we can handle and do like, we're gonna try to do 10, 15 minutes for the past, 10, 15 minutes for the present, and then close with the future, Again, I will try to leave at least 10 minutes or maybe a little bit more for, for, for questions for you. So let's start with, with the past. Frederick proposed to start with a, an interesting slide with the history of the SAP security node. So Frederick, please, you can give an overview in case there is no SAP customers here. I guess most of you know SAP, but just in case, a brief yeah. introduction of SAP security nodes and why, why we decided to start with this graph, uh, thinking about the past of SAP yeah. security. So, microphones, hello? You can hear me? Okay, great. So, um, this is a slide you see quite often uh, related to SAP and corresponding uh, security nodes. So that's an overview of the total amount of security nodes. Uh, you can download that uh, from the service marketplace. As we are starting with the past, uh, you can see basically on the left side that between 2000 and 2008 or so, there hadn't been many security nodes. Uh, you see a big, large change around the year 2010. Um, but to be honest with you, already in 2007, there was some sort of change because back then uh, there was like the uh, talk from Mariano uh, from Onapsis about uh, several vulnerabilities and the most famous one is like the gateway exploit, which is uh, still a vulnerability um, we can see at many customers out there. So it is patched in the default, but whomever had been running back then an SAP system and had been upgrading and is not familiar with the whole SAP security patch mechanism uh, still now has that issue. So what happened around in 2009, 2010? So uh, those people who work with Embasis remember that around in December, there was a huge amount of security nodes released, uh, which was quite a challenge for some customers. 
so over 500, and then uh, the next month again, many, many more uh, security notes released. And um, obviously there was some sort of change in the same way as uh, Microsoft had a change from my experience uh, with, uh, let's say, going from, from Windows 98 XP and then delaying Vista and changing the security mindset. Um, I think we can see the same at SAP. So um, to my understanding, they uh, scanned the whole uh, SAP standard back then, the ABAP code, uh, using static code analysis. At least that's what they uh, said at the packet. So um, that was the first big pile. Nowadays, we see it going down, whatever the reason for that is. Maybe we have a discussion on that later on. Uh, we will see. Um, but that's like kind of the history, how, how it started. And um, we can still see vulnerabilities up until today. Maybe that's a topic I would just like to add. Um, so uh, whenever you do have an SAP patch, uh, keep in mind for all the people who are not familiar with SAP that you do have the so-called downwards compatibility. And that's something where the security department of SAP needs to struggle as well with, which basically means uh, in difference to a Windows update where you would apply the update and afterwards you're somehow secured, um, in some of the cases you need to make manual activities and you need to make those manual activities in order to activate the patch. So implementing the patch, so downloading it alone is not sufficient. And uh, unfortunately, whenever there is something that could potentially break uh, a customer functionality and that could be as simple as they forgot about an authorization check and that is now introduced, then of course there could be some sort of background process that is running, is using that functionality and that would break, which means there's a switch that a customer needs to enable, uh, which is a challenge. So that's why we still see many customers struggling uh, with security. Great starting point. So if we sit in 2010 or, or similar, like yeah, what do you remember at this time, like trying to contact SAP customers and, and and work with them in terms of improving security, doing consultancy, how it was? It was, it was actually very interesting and, and sort of funny um, if you approach the customer back in the day. Uh, first of all, there was uh, sort of a mindset that um, SAP systems are sort of internal only, so uh, what's the risk, right? Um, and, uh, and then when ultimately we, we got into a customer and we got them talk about what we like to coin as SAP cybersecurity. So as opposed to the traditional SAP security when they think about roles and permissions inside the business logic of the, of the SAP system, we try to direct their attention towards um, the, uh, the vulnerabilities in the system that can be exploited from, from the outside of the system. So from the, from the network or, or even the OS layer. Um, we ran into the situation many, many, many times that we got into a room and uh, there were the SAP folks on one side of the table, and there were the security folks, IT security, on the, on the other side of the table. And they started by introducing themselves to each other because they had never spoken to each other before. Uh, unfortunately, that is still the case here and there, <laughs> but we're seeing some improvement. But that's, that's one of the yeah. funny things I remember that in, in many, many customers, we realized that they never spoke to each other. And uh, that actually, if I may still add, that actually leads to um, an interesting um, observation that we also made back then, and that is something that is to some degree still relevant today, um, is that one team assumes that the other team will take responsibility for things which ultimately they don't. Like the SAP team assumes the security, IT security team has it covered, which they don't, and vice versa. So that leads to a pretty dangerous and, and, uh, and significant gap in the overall protection of SAP systems that we still see today. Great, great. So today at the keynote talk, like we saw the recommendation and how important is offensive security to go back and close to defensive security. So Martin, you have discovered several bugs. You have been working on this. What do you remember of the early days or, or the first days you, you found bugs in, in SAP? How you get into it? Yeah, definitely. So at, at that time, like uh, a little bit before that hype on, <laughs> on, on the security notes, I was working at a, uh, one of the big four, so doing a lot of consulting. Uh, and what was really surprising was that 
th there was not awareness about uh, like 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 this uh, uh, concept of that the SAP system can be hacked not only from the system itself but also from external networks. So I, I think uh, Mariana was the one that maybe start showing uh, uh, um, some things regarding to that and attacks that had to do with like someone sitting in the network. Um, but it was around that time that like everyone started a little bit to 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 understand uh, uh, and start getting like into this mindset of okay, it's not only uh, my SAP and the users already in the SAP that I have already provisioned there, but also attacks coming from from other places. And one of the main things that I remember was it was really hard to uh, have information about anything, right? So uh, for, for me, it started like uh, from the perspective of a security researcher uh, interested in, in like uh, doing vulnerability hunting and trying to discover new things. Uh, it was really difficult uh, to, to, to uh, try to get information on how to uh, like uh, understand the inner workings of, of the different components and all that stuff. So uh, I, I think that is a natural process that we have been doing like as an industry and as a community uh, to start to get into sharing more of that information, right? But um, it, was, it was definitely difficult. Uh, you, you need to have like some starting point where, where, where you can uh, eventually grow your own knowledge. Uh, and it was, it was painful at some point, yeah. So we have like a baseline, like around 10 years ago, like there were a lot of changes in the amount and, the, and, and two times there were changes in the, in the amount of SAP security nodes that were released per year, what happened in the, in the customer side with the culture, what happened in the offensive security side. So let's slowly move forward and see how we arrived to, to the present. So. Which which are the changes that you have seen? Like maybe each of you can, can can mention one. But what started to change, like in terms of this information, in terms of the companies, in terms of so we we, we have been discussing today with SAP people in terms of the the documentation around security, all the papers that SAP have released related how to like security base and how 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 this slowly changed over the years. Uh, what did you see? No, if I may, the, what we're seeing um, today when working with both with SAP and SAP customers is actually a change of, of mindset. And uh, in, on the SAP side, I think that we're seeing more openness or the tendency to be more open about, um, about vulnerabilities, about being you know, disclosing them and providing security notes. And for those of you who are not in the, in the SAP world, a security note is not like a written note actually is a fix that you need to deploy, right? So that puts these numbers into perspective. Um, and, and we're seeing that SAP is acknowledging uh, to some degree in their product that there are areas in the product that, um, that need to be secured by customers um, by adding technology, by adding knowledge, by adding processes around the, uh, the, the, the solutions that will ultimately allow them to operate these solutions in a secure way. Um, and it has long been the perception um, from customers that SAP is supposed to deliver a all-encompassing, super secure, all-in-one solution. Um, but with the fact that most of the SAP solutions are heavily, heavily customized, that's obviously something that is, that is not very, very realistic. And we're seeing um, a change of mindset in, in SAP customers and the SAP community in general that there is um, a, a need for customers to better understand the inner workings of their products and solutions in order to be able to secure them adequately, as I said, with technology and processes around their solution. Yeah, I think that there, there was a, a chain as, as we were seeing like on the mindset. Uh, I think that the fact that now there are companies dedicated to SAP security when uh, back in those days they, they, they were not that much. It was like general consulting companies that they did uh, SAP, but uh, now it, there's an entire market dedicated to that. I think that that helps to bring uh, like uh, awareness uh, about the problems. Uh, I, I'm, I think that I'm starting to see also some uh, standardization that definitely helps because it gives uh, the customers and the, the administrators tools to, to, to be able to, to like 
uh, implement all, all the security guidance and, and everything in, in, in an easy way. Um, it, it's funny because sometimes there are a lot of things that we found like as security issues that if you truthfully follow the guidance that maybe is hidden in the documentation, it should be a problem, right? But what, what used to be, and this is still the case for, for many, but I think it's slowing down, is that uh, those, those like, uh, recommendations and guidelines are, are, are getting deployed uh, a little bit more uh, and in an easy way. Uh, I think that there's a still a long way to go, but uh, it's kind of what uh, I'm personally seeing when, when talking with, uh, with, with companies that have SAP systems, right? So they're starting to, to get into uh, an standardization um, that uh, definitely helps uh, on, on, on bringing those, those issues down the line. Yeah, I mean, um, as I mentioned, like in 2010, SAP was picking up the topic and in the same way, since a couple of years, we can see, at least in Germany, the topic of cyber, cyber, and cyber security. Uh, tremendously increasing also within politics and in the same way it is as uh, at the customers. So um, likewise, also from an attacker's point of view, uh, we can see an increased amount of, of, let's say, publicly known hacks. So since 2012, there, there have been some hacks around. Uh, we have big hacks basically going on um, every day, but we have not so many information about actually where SAP systems have been hacked. So um, there are public examples out there. Um, I guess the OPM hack, which was also explained a couple of years ago on that conference, um, is a big famous one. And um, so that changes also the mindset of the customers. I can see that they treat it now in a different way, even though they are still struggling with the same issues. If you do have a large customer who runs like 150 SAP systems, um, and in the year 2019, they are not aware about the 18-month rule. So maybe a question, who knows about the 18-month rule regarding security patches in this audience? So of course, the people from SAP, <laughs> but not everyone else. That so th that's a change that was introduced like in 2012, and that basically explains like um, uh, the challenge. I, I mentioned earlier, we have mm -hmm. the downwards compatibility. We have a lot of good information we can get from SAP, and then there are just the people who, where, who need to operate more systems every year. It gets more complex, um, and the TCO code should go down. So, um, and in the same way, of course, SAP is, from my perspective, also trying to deal with the situation that an SAP system is not shrinking. It's growing and growing and growing. In the same way, the complexity is growing. And of course, complexity is like the worst enemy uh, for security. So that's, that's kind of a challenge. Um, the 18-month rule, to just uh, explain that. So that was introduced, uh, I think, around 2012, together with the announcement that certain security nodes are now only shipped together with uh, secure, uh, support packages. And in the same way, if SAP is discovering uh, internally some security nodes, they are only leasing it, uh, depending on the priority in conjunction with the corresponding support um, package in order to reduce the overhead. And then we have the security patch day. So every second Tuesday, and you th get the information. That might explain also a little bit like, yeah. uh, the number of security nodes going down, maybe. Hmm. I, I guess there are multiple answers to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd like to, to like to add something to uh, to that, and that's the uh, the thing that we have seen. And when I say present, I mean maybe the past couple of years or so, um, where we've seen that overall the topic of of cybersecurity or security in general has become much more of a focus um, inside of SAP themselves. So they have released some excellent documentation on secure coding. They have released a couple of very interesting APIs for security vendors to attach their product to. They have released a major product in the wider sense of security, the enterprise threat detection solution. So I think it really is, uh, is becoming more and more of a uh, um, even decision maker topic um, because of that increased awareness and because of the fact that SAP is more openly talking about security um, in, in their products. What, what you mentioned before, like the, there were some discussions about who need to take care about SAP security. Like 
SAP teams or SAP security teams or IT security, InfoSec, cybersecurity. And, and it was amazing for me, like if you have been working in other fields of cybersecurity, there is no doubt that there is an IT security team that should be taking care of this. And it was a big surprise for me when I start to get into the SAP world, like, okay, there is an SAP security team that is not inside the, the, the traditional IT security organization. And I saw that discussion and I saw that discussion like, growing and, and achieving to, to good conclusions in the company. So who do you think is winning the battle in terms of who is the final responsible of, of an SAP issue, an SAP risk, an SAP vulnerability? Like, I know it depends on the companies. I, and I'm, I'm just asking about the general, if, if there is a general rule, or it's just depending on the company. What, what, what are you seeing nowadays? Well, I mean, it's that's like IT risk management. So if you drive security bottom up, uh, that only goes to a certain level. If it goes top down, then you have a different maturity level and you can see that within the companies. So I don't know many companies where it's driven bottom up and they have a good maturity level. Yeah, yeah I agree. I think that, it, I mean, the, the, the final responsible or, or accountable should be the CISO, right? Uh, there's, there's no doubt about that. Uh, the problem, I think, from the operational perspective, it starts when you have like so many distributed components and systems that talk to each other, uh, uh, and that's always a challenge. But I think that the ultimate responsible should be the CISO, right? So uh, whatever structure works for that company should be uh, aligned to this. Aligned to, exactly. You, yeah. you would agree. limit it to the CISO, not the CFO or CEO? Well, yeah, the, the company as a whole, but <laughs> yeah. from, from an operational That's perspective, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. okay, and like another topic that I would like to see how it's going in the present, like we have been talking about SAP security nodes, and at least I saw lately the last three years, like big improvements on what the companies is doing. Like we are in the defense track. I know more a lot of you and, and, our, and ourselves too, that we have been working on, on finding bugs, but we are mostly focused on what is happening in, in the in the company side. So how they get better in Sony? Like you mentioned, like there's a lot of custom calls, so there's a lot of things that can be implemented by default. Uh, company need to put a lot of effort, like making it secure and adapted to the business. So how the comp are the companies getting better in terms of you know achieving the 18 months rules, like not having bugs older than, I don't know, year, six months, three months, whatever, like, what, what do you see? So overall, of course, I mean, um, it, it's a topic that's uh, driving around um, with the, let's say, increased amount of companies dealing with ERP security and the increased amount of researchers doing presentations on those topics. Uh, there's an increased amount of awareness. I also like the fact that SAP has their own solutions because uh, SAP also has a quite good sales department. So that brings also awareness into the customers, uh, which overall helps just driving the situation to, to, to um, help the customer to, customer to get uh, to a more mature business or a better maturity level in terms of security. I, I agree, and I agree that there is an increasing amount of awareness, um, which ultimately leads to the companies getting better and better at securing their SAP systems. So we are um, in situations like the one I mentioned earlier uh, that were happening on a regular basis in the early days, they're, they're becoming less and less, um, less and less common. So we now see a tighter integration between IT security and, and SAP security there. Not maybe not fully integrated, not fully embedded, but there is some understanding that they know each other. That they know each other. Yeah, <laughs> they, maybe they had a beer at the canteen or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and and what I can say, just to reinforce what uh, what Frederick said from a from a business perspective, being a solution provider in that biz, in that area, we did see a serious uptake in customer interest, proactive customer interest in security solutions, which suggests that there is. Uh, an increased awareness out there and that they are looking to towards solutions to secure their system. Yeah, let, let me jump in like, not, not with a question, but I, I saw an interesting case speaking with a, with a big company, like a customer that they say like, our weakness in, in terms of installing SAP security node were 
was most like a cultural problem than a technical problem because like we are, we were still thinking about ourselves about SAP like 10 15 years ago like a, it, 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 we know it's it's a big system it's a complex system but it's also a, a robust system so they say we were really afraid about installing new things all the time every month like we were afraid but then we say okay let's do this let's install the SAP security nodes in a testing environment and if like 15, 30, 60 days later, it depends on the company. Nothing, everything is working okay. Even the custom code, we will just release the patch to, to production. So uh, for me, it was interesting having this discussion with this customer that they say it was not a technical problem at all. It was totally cultural. We were still thinking like the old days, but nowadays, like we, we didn't have any problems. Like um, almost all of them work with the custom code. Uh, uh, as well, do you think it's it's a valid approach? This one, yeah, I think it's 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 a risk management question, right? So, what's the risk of uh, maybe uh, breaking something by pushing the patches uh, too fast versus the risk of of not doing it or, or waiting for the next I don't know six month cycle to 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 put things together? So, uh, obviously, there there might be companies that are more adverse on not to taking that risk. But, but I think it is a decision that needs to be made. And obviously, it has to do with uh, culturally and how you approach it from, from uh, organization-wide and, 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 uh, and yeah, how you think about to, to, to solve it. Uh, I, I don't think, uh, I also agree that I, I don't think the main problem is technical. Not at all. Yeah. A few more questions regarding the present, and then we can move to, to the future, but, and, and also to, to allow the people to ask questions. <laughs> Let me start with a simple question for you, Martin. You mentioned like 10 years ago, it was really difficult. I know we have a lot of SAP customers here and we have like a uh, we are in the security space, but you mentioned there was not so much information. So for young people trying to get into the cybersecurity field, like it's better nowadays, which are the best ways to, to start learning about like SAP security? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I do think that it's, it's definitely way easier uh, for uh, someone now that wants to, to join it. There are a lot of already published material, uh, documentation get better. You can get like trial and cloud versions of an SAP system uh, launched in, in, in AWS. Uh, so you can play with uh, or, or things like that. I, I think it get uh, uh, it got a lot better on on that sense. Um, uh, and yeah, the, this this idea of of like sharing the knowledge, I, I think at, at some point is is paying off in in, in that front. Yeah, and what what I saw lately in customers as well is that what you mentioned, like at the beginning, is definitely a key point. Like a lot of people in the IT security team that they already understood that they need to take care of SAP security, but they want to learn. And, and, and mm -hmm. we saw that nowadays it's much easier for those teams to get up to date of how they can better sync with the SAP security teams and, and how to improve security. So last question regarding the present, like it seems everything is better, but I'm pretty sure customers have a lot of things to do yet. So which are the most common weakness in, in terms of how to approach SAP security inside a company? What do you think? I mean. They, they get a, they, SAP got better, definitely. We have a lot of material. The community got better. The, the vendors, we got better. So what's still pending on, on, the, on the customer side? What do you think when you go to customers? Well, from my experience, there are two big topics, which is secure default, which is partly available, or in many cases, it is available, but not in all cases. So you can still install an 1809 uh, S4HANA system and you have uh, some, some things where the customer need to do as post-configuration uh, customization steps in order to um, secure the system. Think about stuff like the security audit lock, which gives you the information you need to run a SIEM system. Think about the callback vulnerability I introduced in 2015. Um, so you need to do post-installation activities and of course, as always, if you need to do something manually and then there is a rush, then you have some externals. Maybe the big four companies are uh, also somehow involved in time pressure. Uh, we need to go live, yada, 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 and you still end up uh, with maybe overall having a system that, that has a better security maturity level, but the customer still configures it in an insecure manner. And for me as an attacker or for the one who just learned it and started 
freshly, mm -hmm. he can still find the stuff that's uh, quite old. And uh, the attacker has always the advantage. He just needs one vulnerability. And uh, mm -hmm. then the defense department is like in ah, crazy mode. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. it's it's a yeah. challenge, but. Uh, yeah, I, I would. Uh, yeah, I would I'm agree. I would agree with that. Uh, I think that um, there's been a lot of progress. I think that uh, one of the questions I always ask is if the velocity of uh, they are getting better. I mean, customers in terms of adapting everything that the community and the industry and SAP itself uh, started to put into the product. Is the velocity that they can adapt all that is enough, or, or if they are running slow versus the attacks and, and the growing complexity, right? Because it's not that uh, SAP is uh, uh, like stuck on, on their products. They keep adding stuff, yeah. which is good, of course. So that that's the question that I always... So maybe companies got better, but there's a speed of stuff that still need to be solved. Let, let me put another question on that topic, because we earlier mentioned, so now someone can easily start, start hacking. Uh, we have a lot of researchers, a lot of penetration testers here. So my question also, maybe a question for you would be, um, the difference between 10 years and today, so how hard is it to find new zero-day vulnerabilities? What's your experience? I, I think it's, it's harder. Yeah. I think it's harder. Well, to, to today, like two Anapsis researchers, Noel yeah. and, and Pablo, that they deliver the talk here and they say that it was difficult to find yeah. a way to exploit this. So I think based on what I've seen, because I've been here for three years, but we, we have people have been do, doing bug hunting for years, like, it's getting more difficult because it evolves. Like you can see here, like they patch, like I think it's over 3,000 patches in, in 10 years. So definitely it's, it's more difficult. And, and, and that's, that's a good thing. Like yeah. that's a challenge for us in terms that we are trying to, to find it before some malicious Asian can, can do it. Uh, so it, it's more challenging and I think it's good for us. It's definitely better for SAP and for customers because it's, it's more secure somehow, and so that I think I, I totally agree with Martin. I wanted to add another thing related yeah. to like weakness in terms of the customer side. That is, of course, again, it's pretty obvious that it got better in every in every sense. But we are still talking about like fixing stuff to prevent attacks, like to keep up today with secure configuration, installing the patches. In my opinion, and I'm open if you disagree or also to say that you see the same, like I think customers still have a pending issue, including SAP security in their incident response like plans. And, and, and we have been part of, of, a few, of a few cases when they have an incident yeah. and they want to better understand, but SAP wasn't properly configured to have enough logs to do an analysis. So they are getting better in terms of prevention, but they still need to include in the whole cybersecurity process to be able to also attend like uh, mitigation, I mean, uh, any incident response activity that may happen in, in a company. And I think there is a lack of efforts there, basically because they put the effort in some other place. Do, do you see the same or do, do you think, or, or have you seen like improvements in this area? Well, again, it's about TCO. So uh, smaller companies don't have the resources to run their own uh, security operation center, then they're not many people out there who have the necessary skill set. Uh, most likely they won't be cheap. Uh, on the other side, you just might not have every day enough incidents to just say, okay, this pays off to invest into a security operation center. In, in the same way, you can then also say, I outsource it. So then you have very large customers. Uh, and then it's, uh, again, a big question, how much know-how do they have in terms of SAP security? They might be running already in a security operation center. SIEM is already in place. Um, but the SAP systems are not connected. There, there are exceptions, that was, of that course, was, that, was, big that, brands, was yeah, yeah, that was my point. Yeah. It's, it's either that or um, they are uh, purchasing and, and deploying a false sense of security by putting quote unquote generic security solutions in front of an SAP system. Uh, which hmm. ultimately only partially secure the threat vectors into that system. Um, so, for instance, they would put something like a web application firewall in front of an SAP system, which is a good thing to do, right? I'm, I'm not saying don't do it. It's, it's better than not putting anyone there. 
but they are, they are totally missing other vectors into that system that the web application firewall simply cannot see because there are proprietary protocols, because there are some communication that is internal and not using any of the ports that the WAF is securing. Um, and, and ultimately, it comes down to really understanding the, the, the specific requirements um, to secure an SAP system and applying the right set of knowledge, which is sc scarce and, and rare, and applying the right technology to best possible secure those systems. Yeah, interesting. So when we're preparing the, this panel, like you, you mentioned something, Frederick, like how digital transformation is changing or is challenging IT security teams in terms of keeping, keeping up to date with SAP security? Yeah, well, I mean, that's a big question. And you know, we discuss all yeah, of this, yeah, well, but then well, it comes digital well, transformation. So I mean, there, there's also a different answer like two months ago and, and, and like today because uh, I can just observe that there had been some changes uh, in the board area at SAP. So I have no clue where, where it's going in the future. Uh, for sure, someone can say just there's a big movement into the cloud. I guess some people think of, yes, we can move everything into the cloud, um, looking the way how, how SAP grew also from 4.6c, 6.20, 6.40, the whole NetWeaver stack. Uh, I guess the full answer will be uh, that there in the future will be a large amount of hybrid environments which will introduce a new complexity. So we have seen the stuff in the morning. Um, complexity with the cloud and it's not just like uh, you put everything in the cloud and then uh, you're done with the responsibility then who has access to that and and many more questions arises from a architecture point of view so maybe we can say that it's again another risk of, of achieving a false so sense of security like I, yeah I, hmm. I, I, hmm. not that I'd like to think so but hmm. I think it is it is uh, happening that um, because there are, uh, back, in the, back in the day when the SAP systems were internal and you had someone, actually had someone who was in charge of securing it, he owned that system, right? In a positive way, not a hacker way. Um, whereas now, SAP applications are being used at software as a platform, platform as a service, software as a service, platform as a service, and, and the responsibilities of who's actually in charge of securing what layer of the stack is, fuzzy sometimes. Um, and that might ultimately lead to, uh, to, again, either a false sense of security or to people applying too much tech to a solution, uh, to a problem that is not really existent. Um, and, but what it's certainly doing, as Frederick said, it's, it's increasing complexity by, um, by integrating those cloud environments with on-prem installations. We just recently saw um, a significant security issue with the, with the cloud connector. So that's, that's stuff that that will keep us busy and that will probably keep SAP customers um, awake at night, some of them, um, when they have deployed this tech and, and are looking to address those issues. Yeah, the, the, the other thing that uh, uh, we, we are seeing a lot with like this digital transformation, besides being a, a buzzword, is that the ones driving that, that initiatives are, are the business areas. It's, it's not IT, the one that decides I want like a mobile app for, for, for my customers, right? Uh, is, the, is the business area. So what happened is that the business area take the decision and they run fast into something that sometimes IT and in particular security is, is maybe not following up. Uh, and what we are seeing is like this, um, like opening up uh, and, and like this uh, pro prolification of applications and cloud systems that at some point when, when, where the core business is running on SAP, they need to connect everything to each other, right? right. So that, that's a big challenge that I think is, uh, and we are probably going more into the future yeah. as, right. as well. So but it was the plan, yeah, yeah. Likewise, so in, in the same way, if people are moving into, into the cloud, one of the challenges I do see is that just like, now we have different owners for the IT somehow. So in the past we had like the central IT department, uh, SAP has many, many services which are running in the cloud and all you need to have is a credit card to enable them. So um, different departments will just decide on their own to activate certain functionality. And we made more critical complex. business processes might run through these applications. Uh, and in the end, again, it's the responsibility somehow within the IT operations, sub-basis, and 
it's a big question mark where, where it will go from for the future. That there's a movement to the cloud, there's no question about it. Uh, I guess 20, year 2025 is coming where the current NetWeaver um, solutions are at least uh, end of life or uh, the standard maintenance is ending. Uh, everyone is thinking about somehow a migration to, to HANA databases. Um, so that's, again, a different topic. In the same way, the HANA databases uh, also bring uh, a, a change of paradigms from my perspective, because in the past you could like easily exchange a database overnight. If Oracle says you paid an additional 2% maintenance, you know what, I go to DB2. Uh, so in the future, that's not possible anymore if everyone is moving to HANA. And um, in the same way, also the corresponding coding is changing. So we see a way more integrated um, way how HANA is connected into the systems. And of course, in order to, to uh, take all the advantages the solution is offering, you need to more tight coupling and you need to push down uh, the corresponding calculations down to the database. So that will also introduce uh, another challenge. Great, so we have only 70 minutes and I promise at least 10 for <laughs> questions. So let's try to move to the future. Like what do you imagine for the following five or 10, or, or 10 years? Like where the main challenge will be for the whole community, like SAP, vendors, customers, like, it's definitely, I mean, if we see 10 years ago, like definitely change. So how it will change in the following 10 years? Like try to make two minutes each one so that we have, have time for, for the audience here to ask questions. What we're gonna be talking in this type of conference in five, six, seven years regarding SAP security? Okay, sure. You want to start? No, go ahead. Uh, well, I think that we very saw about the cloud hybrid, uh, where all the complexity of connecting the different components will open up for new type of attacks and new things. As is happening like in other contexts, right? I don't know, the AD security track is full of things that has to do with uh, issues when you connect your on-prem AD with Azure, right? So I think the same type of, of, of problems uh, will start to, to, to be more common for, for SAP environments. Um, I think that uh, definitely uh, like mobile applications are going to be more and more more mainstream. With, uh, they already are, right? But uh, I, I, we are starting to see a lot of customers like developing their own applications, maybe on Fiori or on some other frameworks. So that's going to be probably uh, another focus area. Um, and I, I, I think we'll def definitely um, uh, all around also infrastructure and, and cloud uh, like native uh, problems, right? That maybe we are not that aware uh, right, right, right now, but just that, that's what I think is okay. is going. Hmm. Yeah. It, my my outlook is uh, is twofold. Uh, there is going there are going to be an increasing number of challenges due to the increased complexity of um, of the systems in general, and also of the more and more complex deployment. When we talk hybrid deployments, um, integration of you know, whatever other application infrastructure, um, which is thing that may add to an overall decrease in, in security. But I also do see um, a, an increase in security because I think more and more of the security stuff that is currently bolted on security tools will be become more and more baked in security tools. And we clearly see that trend uh, with, um, with implementations of security protocols uh, inside SAP with uh, the uh, um, public APIs that are being made available that vendors can, can, um, can attach to and also that SAP provides solutions to. So I see this trend really as complexity growing on the one side, which is pushing security down, and then the overall increased awareness um, and, and overall increased product security on the side of SAP, which is um, counterbalancing that movement basically. Mm. Yeah, interesting. So I see an additional topic, which is like uh, the change of the mindsets uh, within development units. Uh, within the cloud environment, you have topics like continuous integration, continuous development pipeline. You do have a cloud environment and all of a sudden SAP is deploying a patch and then you 
might have an issue because you uh, wait an issue within your custom coding as an example and you need to deal with it because all of a sudden it's there. So that will already uh, introduce a different kind of awareness to the topic because if even if the people are not, uh, let's say, uh, uh, friends of confidentiality and integrity issues, at least availability is for the business always uh, a big uh, key driver. So that's a topic. Uh, for sure, I'd like to add. Uh, whether the notes will go up or down, uh, I have no clue. Um, one of the things I, I foresee for the future that uh, uh, in the same way as we have now, let's say, uh, a huge amount of, of uh, data breaches, I foresee that in the future, of course, this might happen in SAP cloud solutions or in the same way it could happen that uh, a customer running on an SAP solution has a, such an issue. I'm not saying the cloud is vulnerable. I'm just saying looking at the past that every major big company has been hit, like Facebook, Google, and so on, there's at least a likelihood that this could happen in the future. Uh, fingers crossed, everyone is working on that topic that it's not happening, but uh, that's something well, I predict for somewhere in the future. and. Uh, that could be anywhere in the future. So negative. Well, <laughs> somehow what I'm listening is like SAP security has yeah. evolved, like maybe getting up to date with any other software, at least like if we talk about operating system or more uh, any other like massive software, there are, there, there are some things that are obvious, like for example, a CISO should be responsible. If we, if we see back 10 years ago, like it seems it wasn't as clear for SAP. Uh, there weren't so many patches, so more or less we are achieving like it's normal. It's happening where it needs to be happening, so that should lead sooner or later. For example, that we're gonna see breaches because it's happening, and that's normal. That's not good or bad. You just need to take care of it. Thank you very much. I really appreciate. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for being here, and we will be the whole day, today and tomorrow here if you want yeah. to to continue the, the discussion. So thank you very much to everybody. Thank you. Okay.